Thank you for pushing the button again, Christy. <laughs> I figured out last night that when you're recording in the breakout room, if you don't hit stop before you go back to the main entry, that's when it said recording is in progress because it's still me recording. It thinks I'm recording the main session too. And I realized that between the first and the second session. So uh -huh. <laughs> when Shelly's like, who started that? And I was like, oh, I think it's me still recording. <laughs> I'm glad you're still learning too, Christy, because you're an expert. <laughs> so Christy does like 800 better. things for our chorus. <laughs> yeah. How many hours but do we everybody have? Everybody needs a Christy in their chorus, I think is what I heard somebody say. <laughs> okay. I have had sustenance, so I'm ready to close her down with this last wonderful program. I have fresh coffee. I can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> this next section is about bringing it all back together as a team with your leaders in the other divisions like section leaders and um, your director. And so, oh, Director Paula. Um, and so we're going to be talking about, uh, let me get my screen up so I can read correctly the name. And let's go to a slideshow. Oh, you know what? I did it again. I've got to go to the slideshow and then share the screen. So excuse me just a moment. Well, I do that. Um, earning trust with your chorus and working as a team to get out of the box. So that's what we're going to share and talk about. There we go. How do you get your chorus to jump in with both feet and, and trust you and the other leaders? You want comments or is that a rhetorical question? That's a rhetorical question. Okay. <laughs> as I go through my slides just making sure thank you christy um we're gonna again bring our focus into combining mindset and some knowledge so that both are better served rather than standing alone we want to combine them now we looked at this slide last night because we wanted to answer the questions on the post-it notes. How do we build consistency of the product every single time? And how do we create audience connection from all members? We've talked about that um, in our stagecraft uh, and, and with the games that we play with our uh, choruses from last night's class to really engage people and get their muscle memory going in another direction and, and get them training. Right, because all of that really is training, right down to the physical warm ups using those parts of your bodies. Um, we just talked about how we get the chorus to become more free while being unified. We looked at those examples uh, of those top 10 choruses. And then, how do we create buy in for the necessary work that it's going to take with both the directors? and the members. So your relationship is not only with your members, but with your section leaders and your director. So we wanna earn trust through teamwork. And there are some ways to do that. We wanna emphasize some of these things while we are leading our ladies through maybe some kind of scary stuff for them, right? We wanna be we want to emphasize encouragement always. We want to make sure that everybody feels safe as they try new things. The first attempt is never going to be the best attempt, right? But it's the, but it's an attempt. So we, we want to make sure that everybody feels safe in trying. We want to appreciate everybody's efforts. We want to say lots of appreciative things, say lots of appreciative 
uh, words. Um, and you want to have confidence in your own knowledge as a leader. So it takes a little bit of background work to really become uh, comfortable with the kinds of phrases you want to use. Uh, practice what you're going to say right after the group tries something. What's the first word out of my mouth going to be? Uh, emphasize that you recognize that growth does come in phases. So it's okay to be on a journey rather than having arrived. And share responsibilities, make little tiny things important. Uh, we talked about that some at the opening of uh, this entire weekend last night. Uh, in our opening, I want to call it the opening ceremony, the opening comments. Um, we want to share responsibilities as much as possible so people feel invested in what they're doing and important and valued. And that creates opportunity for teamwork. Always be looking for ways to create a team. And as a visual leader, you are part of that thought process. We're going to go back to a mindset slide that we had before in another class and just, again, say, own your course persona. Take time to own that reality and celebrate it. Embrace your achievements. Let those accomplishments sink in and redefine your group. And then acknowledge that, you know, maybe we didn't hit all our goals, but we've got processes in place. We can change them. It's not because we didn't do or didn't care. It's just that the processes maybe didn't serve us. And then just objectively move forward. Gain your perspective and pivot and get going, get to work on the next thing. I wanna introduce you to somebody who has been used, an author who has been used by uh, a number of Sweet Adeline quartets and choruses uh, to set their mindset all on the same competitive track because we are in a competitive organization, but we also do perform. And that's competitive too, because you're competing for the audience's attention, right? So you should be doing that whether there's a judge in front of you writing comments down or whether you're just singing at a farmer's market trying to get the audience's attention. Um, an Olympic gold medal winner in sport shooting, of all things, Lanny Bassam uh, writes a book called With Winning in Mind. Um, his philosophy is on mental management and how to set your self-image and your goals to achieve high-level performance that will meet any goals you set for yourself. It transcends not beyond just the sport shooting for the Olympic medals um, into all types of performance and competition-related activities. His overarching thought or concept in this book is scoring is a function of great execution and winning is, of course, the result. But thinking about winning can pull your focus off of proper execution when you're in a competition. Thinking about process is the answer. So let that sink in for a second. You don't want to think about the result while you're in the middle of creating the art, right? Um, you know, when you go to those sip and paint things and you're thinking, how is this blue massive ball of whatever going to turn into a lovely dress on a gorgeous side view of a woman, right? So you want to just be in the moment and in the process and that whole completed piece of art will happen. And that's, that's his concept is think about the process you're in, not about the end and the result. He uses 10 whole principles to manage this mental management thing he's talking about. It's a good book. It goes through all of them. You can listen to it or you can buy it and read it. We're going to use um, principle three. And I think it's really good to just kind of, again, read the principle 
out loud and let it sink in. The subconscious mind is the source of all mental power. Well, we know that, but does how do we do it, right? You perform best when you allow the well-trained subconscious mind to do all the work. That's that memory, muscle memory, mental memory. When the conscious mind overrides the subconscious mind, performance decreases. Like, try to go to sleep. I got to go to sleep. I got to go to sleep. Of course, you can't, right? Something happens. And before we go to the action statement, I have a couple of, I have a, I've got one little example of that we can probably all relate to. When you're learning how to drive, you've got all the rules of the road and you've got the hands at 10 and two, or what is it? Seven and five, depending on who's teaching you how to drive. And then you've got your feet and what they do and the mirrors. You're literally going through the checklist as you're driving down the road, your first time, you know, and you're, you're in your learning phase and you're very jerky and cautious and not smooth and it probably is even a little hard to react to something that might come up out of nowhere but as you continue to drive you get better and better and better and smoother because why well you stop thinking about every little thing that you need to do to control the car and you become more subconscious about it it's like, okay, all of those little rules are now down in there doing their thing in my muscle memory and in my brain memory. I don't have to literally bring it up every time in order to do that. That's what we want to have happen in our performance. So the action statement that you can have is, I'm so well-trained that all of my performance is subconsciously done. I trust my subconscious to guide my performance in competition. Now I'm gonna stop for a second and check for questions or thoughts or comments. On a scale of five fingers being, oh yeah, I'm there, to this is the first I've ever heard of it and it's really intimidating, put your fingers up for how this all feels. We got some fives, we got some threes, a one, a four, a three. Yeah, I consider myself to be at about a four uh, because I am still results related and I'm trying to recover from that, but um, it's really, really hard to, to let go of the result in the moment. And I did figure out um, just recently in our last contest that you've got to be really excited to give that story to the audience. And that excitement overrides. It can be a place where you mentally live that has, I got you, Christy. It it can be a place where you mentally live that sort of tamps down the results related stuff right so christy what did you want to say well i know that jocelyn and i were smiling at each other as soon as you put up lanny bassam's book because our music team actually implemented um a book study of this to use with our course this year on our journey to louisville and <clears throat> the key change that it made in our chorus wasn't about the score. It wasn't about where we placed, you know, it wasn't about winning. It was about the mindset that we had going on stage and how we felt when we came off of the stage. We used affirmation statements. We had the chorus share their own. So we used an affirmation statement of it's just like me to, and then finish the sentence. And so we would use these affirmation statements um, leading up to contest. Peggy would send out a mass message every week for us to get those into our mind. And what it did for us as a chorus is we came off that stage, every single one of us feeling like that is the best performance that we've ever had. It was full of joy. 
Um, and while we didn't get a score that we necessarily thought we would get, or we didn't place where we would have wanted to place, everyone still came off of that going, but we had this amazing feedback from the audience. And that was our goal was to go out there and have the audience enjoy our performance. And we even had said, we want them to feel like, like during our uptune that they want to come up on stage and dance with us. And we actually had audience members come up to chorus members at the end and say that I wanted to come up on stage and dance with you. And so we feel like we won. We won no matter what our score and our placement was. And that was all because of this mindset change that our chorus has gone through. We've always had this, um, you know, there's more anxiety and nerves and thinking about the score. And you can't not ever think about that. You're at a contest. I mean, there's an underlying you're there to to compete, right? but the mindset of the chorus has made this major shift so i highly encourage if you've not read this book to read this book um, and implement it whether you're in a quartet whether you can implement it in your own personal life you know one of our members said that she's using it for helping her from a diet perspective like you can use this in every facet of your life so it's a fantastic book to to utilize mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, and does anybody else um, ha had exposure to the book before? Paula has. Good. And I liked listening to the audio book while I walked because that's the only time I read. <laughs> and I don't sit down and read. So it was awesome. And to hear the experience of somebody going through using this kind of mental training and 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 really um, saying, yes, it's important to train for the result you want, but then you have to perform for the experience you want in the moment. And train like crazy and then perform for the experience for every one of your little steps. And it's, I got you, Paula. It's, it's, um, it was easier for me to listen to not having it be an artist, singer, performer, musician, because I didn't have to continue to judge if that really applied to me or not. I could just say, this guy is a sports shooter and this is what he went through. And it, it kept my mind more open. Paula, what did you want to say? I was just going to say, I was fortunate enough to meet him. Um, he was, he lived in Colorado Springs and I was in a chorus oh. in the Springs and we had him to the chorus in time to talk with us. And um, to me, the story of how he got there um, because he would go to these, basically do the same kind of preparation, be so well prepared, et cetera, and not be successful. And so he decided to embark on this journey. And that's what most of us are like. You know, we we keep trying, we keep trying, we keep doing things instead of embracing, embracing what we do know and allowing the performance to happen and, and to find all that joy there. But if he is just like he is in the book, it's just amazing. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Huh. So are there prompting words um, that you would want to have in your toolbox to share with your chorus about the trust the training, train, train for the result, but perform for the joy and the experience? anyone charlene um what i've been working with the chorus is the words i've been using is trust and consistency and trusting yourself individually trusting those around you trusting your community and by doing all that and doing that consistency then there's a sense and a strong element of confidence and that's what helped um our chorus when we went to international i made sure that our coaches that came in and they said, what do you want? I said, I want them to feel confident. I want them to believe in themselves. I'm not, nothing else. And and most of them felt really good when we got off the stage, just like Christy was saying, because they didn't think about it. They just enjoyed the moment. And that trust and consistency and confidence, um, I think is really three strong elements. Trust, consistency, and confidence. Those are good things to write down. 
Sarah, how about you? I, something that uh, was watching all the, so some of the things that I just picked up some different things during watching the chorus finals and they do the interviews between. And one of the things that Ronica shared, which I thought was that just stuck out to me was they made a conscious decision for their chorus to say, how far can we get with positive feedback only? How far can we get by supporting everyone, recognizing everybody's on a journey? We're not all created with the same abilities and talents, but we're all focused on the same sort of goal in mind, which is, you know, I think Song of Seattle does this really well is, you know, every single rehearsal, every time we're together, it's fun and enjoyable. And I learned something and hopefully the group feels good about, you know, about the experience. And I think that, that keeping that in mind um, for everyone, because it's, it is a, it, you are putting yourself out there. It's, it's not a, you know, easy thing, you know, to do. And so as much yeah. as there's a supportive environment around everyone, I think that can really go a really long way for people to, tr like Charlene said, to trust and to try new things. And one of the things I thought of at the beginning was how I, I'm new to Sweet Adeline's, um, but I know there's a lot of people who've been in it for decades. How do you approach that with people that have been there, done that? How do you get people who have been in the organization for 20, 30 years to, to continue to learn and grow and, and move, you know, move in the direction that the chorus is, or is deciding to go in or what have you. So just some thoughts. Right. And it is a leap of faith that some of the longer term members have to take because they joined um, maybe for completely different reasons than what people are joining for now, you know, um, and there was much more uh, value in conformity in the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s and even into the 90s. Um, the, the value in diversity the value in expressing your own way uh, really didn't come in Sweet Adeline's, I think. Now, this is my own personal thoughts here. Like, you know, at the turn of the millennium where, where, you know, around the 2000s, you know, you started to get more and more value on individual heart and thought and the conformity thing went away. You know, I had somebody in the bus in my very first contest at International tell me I'd take my wedding ring off because it didn't match everybody else's hands. So there was that. And, and refused, that was, think, right? You refused? In 1990. I <laughs> yeah. I was a meek little mouse and I did it and I stuck it in my bra. So I also didn't want to start a fight in the bus. Well, you know, on the way, in the traffic pattern. <laughs> yes, Sally. Well, I certainly can uh, relate to that because I started in Sweet Outlines in 1973. The conformity that was so strict, I have to tell you, I didn't like it at then, but I did it because that's what you were supposed to do. And we were told about all of these rules. Um, so 50 years later, it is so refreshing to not have them all uh, beating down on you because it does stifle your creativity. And um, I love where we are and where we're going. Mm -hmm. Yay, Sally. You know, it's almost like your audience as a leadership team is your chorus. Mm -hmm. And so you have to convey to them the kind of heart and emotion and acceptance and mindset that that you want them to absorb so that's kind of your first audience and then you take them and convince your audience in the theater all together as a team um so it's not a bad question for a leadership team to ask how are we going to get our entire chorus on board with taking risks. And that's where some risk taking challenges could be some funny, some of these funny, goofy little um, exercises that we did last night, you know, anything to get people 
combined together and hanging with each other and laughing together makes people willing to try. And then acceptance, admiration, love, all of that just gets all over them. And they just walk home a wash in, in positive feelings. I love that Ronica thing that you just shared, Sarah, about, you know, let's, let's look at only positive feedback and see how far we can go. Christy. Yeah. I, I want to brag on Jossie a little bit um, as our new showmanship leader, because that comment, how far can you get with positive feedback only was really applied in our course this past year. Um, something that we did completely different was <clears throat> when we had showmanship evaluation, it wasn't an evaluation really this year. It was, it was a feedback. It was showmanship feedback. And um, Jocelyn was very in um, purposeful and ensuring that of those categories that we were watching for each course member. So our showmanship team would sit out front and actually, I think we did front row is what we use. We used the front row to do this this year instead of just the showmanship team. But on our comment sheets for each, you know, we had a pod and we would do however many people in our pod. It was in the intent was to give positive feedback. Every every section was find the positive of what they're doing for their expression and et cetera, and all those sections. And at the very bottom, you could put some other comments and say, this is what you're doing fantastic. Here are some things you could work on. It wasn't um, in the past. We've done it literally like with scoring where we had point, you know, the points that we put that to say, like, it was so different. It was completely opposite of what has happened in the past. And I think that's what built that trust between Jocelyn and Peggy from, you know, from a director standpoint and a showmanship standpoint, there was this level of trust of they can see all of the good things I'm doing. They're not focused on the things that I need to fix. You know, it doesn't mean that they're not going to go and ask a person, you need to fix this. And Jossie did work with people. But the overarching concept was this positive feedback of everything that you're doing well. Um, and it just changes the complete um, mindset and um, the attitude and feeling of the chorus when you do it from that perspective. Because it owns the persona of a successful group and an authentic group. And, and you're building your self-image um, because you have, and I think maybe if we, as a team, again, value the self-image of the individual as they come to chorus and the self-image of the whole, mm -hmm. you know, and see those as two separate things that support each other, right? Um, and therefore, if you're saying, this is what you do really well, they can build from that in a positive direction. Yeah. And so what a smart thing to do, Jocelyn. Good for you. Yeah. Um, and I'm just kind of letting that sink in for a second because um, I think sometimes we are, it is hard to then give some kind of constructive criticism, right? Or move people forward mm -hmm. from that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Now, this is what we need next. So you will want to have some phrases that are true to you as a leader that you can say that would get that next thing conveyed. And it's different for everybody. Um, I tend to, yeah, say, this is what we need to do next. Yeah. You know? But um, I think starting with a tone of positivity is a huge win because then people are more receptive. Mm hmm to hearing Power. some feedback to let's make this a little bit better. Here's what we could do to, you know, take that to the next level. And then as leaders, again, we've got our leadership team and our directors, you know, everybody that stands in front of people. And then we have our whole chorus unit. When we go out into the world, we want to convey those attitudes and that positivity as well. When we go to our regional convention and contest, we, we want to convey that. And Sally, I don't know how you have felt over the years, but there's a much less competitive vibe now than there was um, when I started in the 90s. And I don't know if Charlene and Sally can speak to that. Go ahead, Sally. Absolutely. It is... 
much more a feeling of being proud of what everybody does yes. as well as yourself. It's totally different. I can remember we uh, in the early days we were told, don't let anybody know what we're singing because they <laughs> might sing the same song. And I thought, well, that's kind of ridiculous, but whatever. Um, we, we, oh yeah, it is so much better. And there were courses that didn't get along simply because they were trying to be so competitive. And we missed out a lot. We've grown so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Charlene? Yeah, I just have to tell you a real quick story. I was brand new to Sweet Adelines. And when I started Sweet Adelines, I actually started coaching before I actually became Sweet Adeline. And I was in this chorus and it was at regional competition and this other chorus was singing and whatnot. And I went, oh God, that is so good. And the person next to me grabbed my arm and says, we don't like them. And I went, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. So yeah, the, the competitive was, it was icky. That's the term I'm going to use. And now it's so much more freedom and I just love it. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we've grown Oh, yeah. yeah, well, it has to it has to have evolved to 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 it. If the organization is tr is wanting to stay in in relevancy, um, because people aren't going to connect with with some of what past looked like, because right. we've changed as a society, um, you know, and, and to connect with people, they need to see themselves in something. And so if you're presenting something that's totally like, wow, I don't, I see all the same. I'm not the same. I don't look like I'm different. I mean, some people just don't, I mean, they don't identify or, or connect with that. So I think that's kind of all full circle of, as people are allowed to be more of their own expression and we're moving along in something together, that's going to connect more with the audience. Mm -hmm. Paula, were you going to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to encourage us all as leaders in our courses or in our region or whatever. Um, I, I can't remember who said it, somebody famous like Mahatma Gandhi or Mother Teresa or something about be the change you want to see in the world. Um, is that we become that and let our choruses and our members and everything um, live out what we hope will be the best of Sweet Adelines um, because that's what convinces others to move in that direction. And um, we are the ones as leaders, we're the ones that leads that and enables people to embrace it because when we encourage it and accept it and live it out ourselves, then others go, oh, okay. Maybe I can do that too. I think um, about that nice young lady who popped into our rehearsal on Wednesday. She was just she was just randomly in the building and she heard us and she's like, but what it, I think what really got her like just like wow was our welcoming attitude. It wasn't you don't belong here, it was come on in. So anyway, that's same same idea. Mm -hmm. Be be the chorus that you want to be in. And yeah. Uh, let that chorus be fabulous. Now, this is a mindset that we can wash all of our knowledge skills with. So that it's part of the fiber of the knowledge skills. And it's easy for a bunch of leaders to sit around and go, yeah, that's easy. That's great. That's sure. But to implement it to the granular level that a chorus member needs is a different task. Yes. And so we need to turn to being intentional about how are we going to infuse our chorus literally with these feelings we've just spent the last 10 minutes talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's a plan. It's a plan you have to make in your notes before or in the car ride there or after you leave, whatever it is, it's gotta be a plan because you're chipping away at every chorus member's defenses and personal walls and personal expectation. I think of expectations as a brick wall, right? That you need to have over here because you have your goals and you have what you want to accomplish, but it can't 
wall you and your heart in, right? You need to be outside of that wall. You need to be separate from the expectations and the fears of will I look silly or am I ever going to be comfortable doing this or do I even want to do this? Do I even want to bend my knees? Do I even want to feel the bottom of my feet when I sing? Or is that just dumb? So it has to be infectious, whatever you do. And the results have to be seen. So a lot of workshopping, you know, there's one thing I do um, where with your feet, feel your feet, but then make sure, put a little thumbtack, a little pin underneath your heels, imaginary, right? So that you're really on the balls of your feet and don't sink back because you're going to get poked by that imaginary thumbtack. And then you do the halvesies thing where you look and then you don't. And, you know, so any of those kinds of exercises that you have in your toolkit, make sure that you're infusing them with mindset of look how fun that is that people are figuring stuff out. So let people watch each other. I love the fact that um, front row can evaluate and give positive feedback to the rest of the chorus. And you could have each row do that um, because it builds teamwork, it builds trust, and it gets that contagion going of, I was a part of something tonight. I'm in the third row in the little, little curvy part, and I got to sit and watch the front row do their thing and make notes or the fourth row do their thing and make notes on what they did well. And they listen to me, but I'm just third row curvy parts. Who even looks at me? You know, I mean, there some of that mentality exists, right? In chorus. So just honor that mentality and try to really intentionally become contagious with the things that you teach and ask yourself how you can make that contagious. Um, Cause it's real easy to sit here and have a, an inspiring conversation amongst like-minded people, right? <laughs> but now the tough part, and this is why we get paid in something other than money is to go and change people for the better, right? That's really our payoff. It is. Paula. I, I just want to stand up and applaud all of that message. That was wonderful. Um, I, I do know as a leader, um, it, where the rubber meets the road is when you have members that are still entrenched in uh, that previous culture that come up and say, she's not singing the right note or, you know, her black doesn't match me or, you know, where it really gets into the details of things. And then I'm just going to say, plan your response, because sometimes you're not expecting that level. You've had this wonderful experience at rehearsal and enjoyed everything. And then somebody comes up afterwards and says that to you. And it's like, so um, I, I just want to encourage you to think of your response ahead of time, because I know for me, I've had to use it several times where I go. Thank you for thank you for telling me that. You know, I'm gonna think about that for a little bit and I'll make sure and encourage them in whatever it is they're needing to be, or you know, encourage them. I'll be sure and encourage them specifically in these areas or something. Figure out your way because it until your chorus really makes a full transition, which I don't know, will that ever be in our lifetime? I'm not certain. Um but we do want to be the ones that carry that forward, even in those difficult times when people are struggling with it. We want to help them. So that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think we, when, you're, I, when you go ahead, go ahead, Sarah. I was just saying that there's 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 so many things that need to happen at a rehearsal. So many things, and you only have two hours to do it. But I think that there are ways to, you know, and, and I see it being done and you just, it, it's just like chipping away at the, at the culture that you want to have in your group. 
And so through the exercises, through the warmups, through the personalities that are leading, through the conversations that are happening, you know, it, there are ways to maybe break that down a little bit to be intentional to help the team or to help the help the entire chorus understand what the values are. Uh, I remember the the you know the survey that our chorus did recently. However, the the you know I I'm I'm seeing it with new eyes that I, and I haven't been around the block very long. But but there could be ways to sort of weave in, you know, what is our chorus culture? Why do we like to come here? What is what is, what are we all looking, you know, what is our goal by being here, you know, and along with the music and everything else. Um, but these intangibles that are sort of underlying to get at Paula's, you know, thing of, you know, we're trying to bring everybody along. There's nobody left behind, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. when you do that, you end up with this wonderful result where everybody feels a part of it. And so, you know, the, those things are hard to get everybody kind of on the same page with, but I think it can kind of be broken down week by week. Yep. We are the basket for everyone's worries, <laughs> you know, and we have to be up for that and we have to take it and love it and care for everybody's worries. And, um, assure them that they're going to be just fine and that they're going to have fun and that they're they're going to learn something and they're going to learn at their own pace so i'm going to go to a little bit of a knowledge recap screen at this point um we've just been in the woo woo section of our class as you can see by this glittery face the subconscious mind is where we find our authenticity. And we've been chipping away at how to get to that subconscious mind, how to train so that we can let go of the conscious override. And so next, let's train the conscious mind to perform the skills. Let's share our objectives for the year, set some training habits and reinforce those training habits, set what you expect the training to be on site and off site from all of your members and be firm and confident with it so that we set the bar at the level you want to set the bar at. And then you'll do that so you can let it go in a performance. And if the leaders have set the objectives and the habits, they can then easily give trust to the entire group, no matter what part of the learning ladder everybody's on, because they're all going to be on different parts, but they're all hopefully going to be going in a forward learning mode direction. And then exude confidence as a leader and as a team, give instant forgiveness when things don't go well, let it pass by. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. That that's not going to happen again, you know, because then the following sentence, you are enough rings true to people. Because if you don't give instant forgiveness and exude confidence, you can't tell somebody you are enough. You will be fine. You will be great. You know enough. You can let go and play. So you got to have the first two before that person trusts you enough to say, to hear, you are enough. And then excitement. Like I said earlier, just make sure there's a lot of excitement to tell the story. And let that be the overriding example. Now, we've been questioning and commenting a lot already. So we will kind of just do a little wrap up here of what we want um, to wrap up on. But my email is my name at comcast.net in case you have any questions um, about anything, want some slides shared or, or anything like that. Um, 
So to recap, oh, Charlene, were you trying to write down my name at Comcast.net? You looked surprised. Okay. Um, to recap, we went from knowledge and study of the action. This is Friday through Saturday. Knowledge and study of the category and apply your score sheets to that category and learn everything that you can learn to infuse in to the next year of work for the next set of score sheets and own who you are and own your persona. Mix your mindset and your knowledge with everything you do and then move into how are we going to grab the audience and tell them what to think, what to expect and what to feel and be very, very intentional about your effect on the audience. Hi, Shelly. Hi, just checking if you're doing okay on time. Yeah, we can wrap okay. it in four minutes. All right. Is that our quit time is 25 after? Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Um, after grabbing the audience, get technical and emotional about it, right? And combine those two things. And you might want to let your people know which you're doing. You know, okay, we're going to learn some skills right now that you can have and that we'll refer back to, to uh, make your performance a little freer so your heart can come through. We're going to practice this so you don't have to think about this is a skill, people. Let them, you know, take them through the process because they're there on a weeknight after doing whatever they were doing. They don't want to have to, the easier you make it to have fun and to not have to wonder the better, right? It's, um, it's important to be a, an inspiration and a guide, right? I'm going to dazzle you and inspire you and include all of you and then i'm going to take your hand and we're going to go there and so you know it's a three-part thing like a good, good potted plant you got your thrill you got your fill and you got your spill on a nice potted plant right and this is the dazzle inspire and then fill them with knowledge and then spill Spill it out all over the place by guiding them to the next place. And I just thought of that. So if that's a stupid analogy, I apologize. No. And what about working on the roots? The stuff you don't see. That's right. The stuff under the ground. Right. You got to fertilize the roots. You got to water them. And you can't let them die. And so the stuff under the ground is what makes the stuff on top so beautiful for the viewer. And it's the same with your chorus and their audience. So I really appreciate you coming and joining me on this little journey. And I have such pride in all of our leaders, big choruses and small choruses. So I'm glad we're all taking this time to do this together. Christy? I was you raised clapping. your hand. That was a clap. Oh, you were clapping. Okay. Clapping. It's a great. And Sarah's clapping. clapping. It's great. All right. Good. So I think we're done. Unless there are burning questions in our last 60 seconds. Cool. Well, this will be the first one we end early. So I will let you go and um, we'll wrap up our day in a group session. Thank you.